Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I've been asked by several people if I can tell them a little bit about the different types of coax and feed line and stuff like that. So let's do a quick refresher. This comes from figure 23.1 out of the 23rd edition of the ARRL antenna book. So let's take a look first at some real coax. Okay, it's round. Uh, it's got some braid inside of it. There's filler in a center thing and so on. So when you're looking at these things on the wall, remember that we have real world examples here of that. So the first we want to talk about is a classic uh, type, single shielded. This has a center conductor which is either uh, solid or stranded. There's a dielectric of some kind, a plastic. There are all different kinds of plastics that you can use. And braid that goes all the way around it. Now this is classic. This is what I grew up with. Now the outer insulation keeps water out of this. One of the problems with the hole in the insulation is that this braid tends to suck up water along the entire length of the coax, causing it to eventually not work. Okay, um, so what you're looking for is something with 100% coverage on the braid. So that almost instantly rules out RG58. Now, RG8X is a form of this cable that works very well. Also RG8U, okay? Now the next one is double shielded. And this vinyl in between is found in some cables, but not all. For example, Times Microwave, uh, either LMR240 or LMR400 has uh, the plastic in here. You can get it with the stiff inner conductor, which is actually a piece of aluminum coated in copper. Remember the skin effect, the RF tends to travel on the surface, so it travels mostly in the copper. You've got, uh, in the case of the LMR200, this isn't braid. It's actually an aluminum foil cover that's glued to this. You scratch the vinyl, we don't have that, and then the braid number one is the major braid that is over it. So you've got double shielding here, and this is excellent cable. This is first class cable. There are a variety of these types of cable. Common cable providers are Belden, Times Microwave, Messi Paolini, uh, DX Engineering has their house branded cable. There's all kinds of stuff that are available. Now we're getting exotic here. This is a inner conductor with a foam dielectric and aluminum outer conductor. This is all aluminum and notice it has some thickness to it. This is an aluminum outer conductor and you can get it with a vinyl jacket. This is rigid hardline. It's very difficult to bend. You almost need to get a professional to do this. Here is something called semi-flexible hard line. This actually is a corrugated copper shield that's wound on here. And these can get physically very big, up to an inch in diameter, sometimes even more. Now, up here we have our 300 ohm twin lead. This used to be exceptionally common as television uh, antenna lead-in and was available dirt cheap and had the two conductors here. Some people, some hams still use this. You can get it, but a lot have moved to either the 75 ohm twin lead or much more commonly, the 450 ohm ladder line. This is a piece of cable with two parallel conductors, not one inside the other, but parallel conductors. And what they do is they punch out windows in here. This is often called window line for that reason. And by doing that, what they do is they make the cable lighter. Let me make note of something else that's going on here. In open wire lines, these are balanced. So as the current in this conductor goes this way, the current in this conductor goes this way. 
Now, it's very easy to misinterpret this diagram, okay? In a coaxial line, the outer conductor is at ground potential, and if done properly, should not be uh, conducting. What happens is the center conductor will conduct first in one direction, that's I1, and then in the other direction, that's I2. This is unbalanced line, and hams use both. I think we all start with the unbalanced coax, and sometimes we move on to trying other things. Okay, we've looked at that figure. So there you have it. We've looked at different types of uh, transmission lines, both the coaxial cables and the parallel transmission lines, and they all have a place in ham radio. It'll be a long time before you get to needing hardline on your antennas. You're going to have to be an extremely serious world-class DXer or um, have some exceptionally long cable runs, like you're trying to put up, say, a VHF antenna on top of a 100-foot tower. You'll need to go to something like that. The thicker and bigger the cable, the less the loss per foot in terms of losing your signal to heat in the conduction as it goes up. So um, if you have watched this far, please uh, do me a favor and subscribe. It really helps uh, with the YouTube algorithm and it will help direct more people to this content so they can learn more about ham radio. Also, if you would like to ask a question, please send it via uh, email to askdave, all one word, at ARRL.net. Ask Dave at ARRL.net. Okay, so there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.